Welcome back. If you missed it, Geordie Smith just put on one of the best performances of all time here at this event. I mean, that 10-point ride was pretty amazing. But Geordie, you were comboed. How did you keep your composure when Seabass had such a great lead on you? Uh, just hard work, I guess. I think you just dig deep. You just think back to all the time. You know, you've been working through the year and you've come all the way this far and you've just got a couple more, you know, just... I guess that's why you train. You know, that's so that when you out there you can just uh, pull that out in a the, in the little bit, you know. Um, it was an incredible wave. I'd had a few opportunities. One left uh, before where I didn't come out. I got uh, a little too deep and then I had one really massive right. thing just drained out but just had no exit and uh, I was like, uh, sooner or later the door's going to open. And give us a first hand account of that 10. I mean, paddling in the vision and then the claim afterwards. Um, the claim was awesome. <laughs> just pretty much stared at the judge's tower. Uh, I thought I might was, was maybe going to run over Seabass for a second, um, and then I was like, oh, that'd be maybe a bonus interference, but no, because, you know, at that point he was, he was pretty much comboing me, um, but yeah, I just, when I came out, I haven't had a barrel like that in so long, and uh, what a feeling to get in a contest, and she's here when you need it the most. And Jordy, um, you know, you're still in the world title race. That was a massive heat win for you. Your dad was saying that Kelly Slater had a couple of words with you. You know, what pearls of wisdom is he giving you? And is that world title factoring in at all for you? Um, yeah, you know, it was pretty a big surprise to see my father come down. Um, I didn't know he was in Portugal, so that was a really big surprise to myself. Um, and, yeah, Kelly, he's really open and, and uh, yeah, he's, he's very open with his words, you know, amongst the younger guys and, um, he just kind of told me, he said, hey, there's been a ton of, of, of good, good rights coming off there, and um, he is the greatest of all time, so you've got to take that uh, bit of knowledge into account. And um, I just kind of trusted my instincts. I went on, I probably got, you know, six or seven closeouts, but uh, I made two, and, um, yeah, I was, I was happy with that. Well, Jordy, we'll see you in the semifinal some amazing moments from today. Peter Mel, what have been some of your best ones? Well, thank you very much, Rosie, and uh, congratulations to Jordy Smith as he has found himself still in the title talks. Welcome to the WSL Post Show. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Still stuff going on behind us, as you can hear the crowd living it up. And of course, it's been an exciting day. We were down here at dawn once again, had a bit of a call again, where we were delayed to get that start. But once it got started, it was on. Uh, Europe in a nutshell right there it was today, uh, you know, dealing with conditions and there was crazy looking waves all day today, but they were far and few in between. Just really wild, a lot of energy, big, big waves pretty much. Um, and then this afternoon, it was like a different day. Uh, it, you know, it really calmed down. It got uh, turned into a perfect condition kind of scenario where everyone could just tee off. Strider, your first thoughts on how today unfolded this morning exactly? I mean, it was uh, exciting stuff pretty much all day long, even though we weren't running heats till the evening. Well, yeah, it was, it was a radical morning, a lot of water and wind and, and a lot of movement. and. You know, I think my hat's off to the to the commish, Trav Logie, for just sticking it out. You know, he could have called it off a long time ago, and he didn't. And thank God he didn't. I mean, look at what we were blessed with. The two rides that went down. We got 10-point rides. We got guys like John John moving through for his title hopes. You got Jordy Smith ready to choke that title hope down a little bit. I mean, this the scenarios are so good. Kolohe and Dino just threading the needle. I mean, there was just so many amazing, perfect moments through this thing. And... It was, you know, we weren't sure what we were going to get when they had this thing on, but hey, I'm glad they did. Perseverance for Travis Logie, and we get underway around 3 o'clock this afternoon, and we went into first quarterfinal, Adriana de Souza, Kaloha and Dino. And uh, this matchup was, uh, we were calling pretty much even on paper, but it really went Kaloha's way the entire heat. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know, he just did a great job of putting himself in the right spot, and uh, this was the very first heat when we started back up this afternoon and it was tough you know it, it, there was great waves but the waves were like uh, something you'd be able to free surf from the scaffolding like look at that over there and then look 100 yards to the left look at that one but you know he actually managed to put himself there in the water which is really, really tough to do and what are your thoughts strider when you, you look at this heat i mean even adriano tried to make mount a comeback like we just saw from jordy but it just wasn't enough 
Well, you know, it's a typical day out here. You know, really, this wave is, you catch a flow, right? You have to find yourself out there in the right place. And it's really hard to battle back once somebody else gets that rhythm. We saw Jordy Smith do it. But, you know, De Souza did his best. And, and hats off, great event for him. Quarterfinal finish. He's still marching through. But Kolohe and Dino, you know, I came up the stairs and saw his dad. And Dino was so, you know, I'm just stoked that he put his head down. He got that tube. He did what he needed to do. And his dad was like, you know, everybody's, there's a lot of talk about John John and the world title and Jordy Smith. And he feels like Kolohe is just going to slide right through and do really well in this event, which does not bode well for John John because they're coming up against each other in the semis. That's <laughs> so true, so true. And you, know, you talk about momentum that Kolohe carried uh, throughout this event. I mean, he's, he's escaped the, the you know, three men heats, he was able to skip rounds. Um, he's been looking in form throughout in every heat, never really ever feeling like he was going to lose. I mean, can he carry that all the way to a win here? Well, you know, we're, first of all, we'll have to wake up in the morning and see what kind of waves we're dealing with. But in general, I feel like that was a good hurdle for Kolohe because we know how um, good he is and solid he is in high performance waves. But for him to get a solid win like that uh, in hollow barrel waves, I mean, you know, it's not like he's some spring chicken, but it is something that he's still trying to improve at. And he showed that today. So I, I, I think he will deliver a solid heat against John. Um, but if you have to pick a favorite, you're looking at John. He is crazy comfortable in those kind of conditions. Yeah, so true. We'll get into that semifinal matchups. Quarterfinal number two is another huge matchup. John, speaking of John John Florence, up against Julian Wilson, who in round five had a great heat this morning. Was able to pick up, pretty much had the best heat of the day going into this matchup in the quarterfinals. But he's up against John John Strider. He was, you know, the rhythm, like, it was just crazy, this thing. Look at these waves these guys are getting, dropping out of the sky, technically having to slow down into the pit. You know, just you have to be behind it and really backdoor these sections, and that's what John did right there. I mean, just beautiful work, going so fast from behind it, finding the rhythm. Look at that, beautiful positioning, double pumping through the barrel, kind of finds the exit, comes out with the spit, the no look, look claim. I love it. <laughs> what is it about John John, and why is he one of the best tube riders in the world? I mean, we, we know. But every time he goes out, even like we saw him in his free surf this morning, sure enough, he's getting the best waves. In his heats, he's finding the best barrels. And in barrels, he is just that guy. Why? Yeah. Well, so there's two different things that stand out to me. Uh, number one, some guys just have that natural ability to just figure it out in big, heavy waves. When there's a lot of water moving around, they know how to find those treasures. Um, and then there's, if you're groomed for it. And for Johnny, he's the best of both worlds. He's a natural freak. He knows how to find uh, really good waves. And then he's groomed that pipeline and off the wall and back door. And, and that's what we're looking at right now. We're looking at huge off the wall, basically. So he's got the best of both worlds, the natural ability. Um, he's been groomed for it. So when the conditions are like this, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. Strider, you've been hanging out in the competitor's area, seeing his demeanor, seeing his posse. Is there anything different you're seeing in, in John John that you've seen from the, the beginning of the season? Well, I, I, I don't see anything different. I, I do see a, a good pattern with him where he leaves the beach. Like, you know, when, the, when we went on hold for a while there, he left. You know, he did not stay down here for that hour and a half or whatever it was call. He was out of here. So I think that that's another thing for him is getting away from the noise, you know, keeping a, a place where he can really just kind of sit back, settle his nerves, and, and be around his, his – he's got a good core group that he's hanging out with. But for him to get away from all the rest of the noise around him and go off somewhere where he can be alone, I mean, that's really important, and that's what he's done. Okay, I agree with that, you know, but even – Leaving the beach now, I mean, John John, it's John John. It's like Kelly. When you leave the beach, you're going to get hounded by the fans. They're going to want the selfies and all that stuff. I mean, that takes a lot of energy, too. I, I think, think, yeah, it does, Strider, but I, I think for him, he, he's stubborn that way, isn't he? That's, that's his routine. He, he's really persistent at leaving and then coming back. It's just part of his routine, and he's not going to break it. Well, here's the matchup. Kolohe and Dino, John John Florence, some huge momentum being carried by Kolohe and Dino. So I like this matchup. Two youngsters that have competed against each other from Gromit Hood, you know, through, you know, NSSAs and uh, Serving America to compete here at the top level. And this is a big heat. Well, I mean, you talk about momentum. Look at John John Florence. The guy's wearing the Jeep Leader jersey. He's flying through barrels. He's really in a, in a, in a driver's seat at this point. And he's, you know, yes, I think Kolohe has got a lot of momentum, but you can't take away from the amount of flow that John John has right now. You're watching him kind of become a world champion in front of your eyes the way he was surfing at the factory sandbars opening up on those big walls threading these double up sick barrels the waves pulling just needles out of the haystack this morning when nobody was else was catching waves 
I, I really do think there is a favorite with John John on that one. All right. Well, I bet you Dino have a talk no. with you about that. But <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk about the bottom half of the draw, which, again, has got Jordy Smith in it. The quarterfinal number three, Miguel Pupo up against Connor Coffin. Both of these surfers talk about you know, world titles, but these guys are talking about qualification. Making it here to the quarterfinals gives them the, they're in the cut line. They're sitting at about 20,000 points apiece. You know, both of them right now, whoever gets through this heat is going to have that much more comfort going into pipeline, being secure in the top 22. Well, some crazy things happen in this event for them. You mentioned that top 22. We had Kanoa Igarashi not improve his points. We had Jaddy go down. We had uh, Keanu Singh go down. So they're going to fly past a, a few of those guys and be well within the top 22. Um, and, you know, of course, Connor Coffin's still going in this event, so this was clutch for them. It was huge. I mean, and you think about that, I mean, that's kind of pressure. We talk about world title pressure, but this pressure right here is just the same, Strider. Well, it is, and I love that Connor is stepping up to the plate. He's loving these barrels. He's probably got a little bit of a, a silver strand feel to it, you know, back home where he surfs a lot. So I feel like he's drawing some lines there of resemblance, and, and that's what he needs to find that comfort zone. Miggy had a great competition though. I mean, the guy was going off. He was taking down Kelly Slater. He was just getting the, some of the best waves of the event. He started out over here at Super Tubes getting shacked, and then he moved over to the factory sandbar, was getting barreled in huge arcs, and then you know came back over here. So great heat, great uh, contest for Miguel Pupo as well. Talk about the rookies this year, third rookie to make it into the semifinals. I mean, we've been seeing these performances by these youngsters making a real dent, in not only in the world title, but also in qualification. So it's great to see these rookies. Bottom last heat, Jordy Smith versus Seabass. This was a great one because uh, probably the most exciting quarterfinal that we got to see in the afternoon here. Uh, dueling it out. I mean, we saw, it looked like to me, Sebastian Zietz was going to take that, that lead. He did take the lead early, but able to fight right back with Jordy Smith. Well, you know, we say it a lot and we talk about rhythm and just trying to, you know, find that, that piece of ocean out there where you just click in and all the waves seem to come to you. And Sebastian Zietz has been very steady with free surfing. He's been free surfing more than anyone, which is his MO. But he's been getting great waves out here, not only in a jersey, but outside of a jersey too. So he continued that in this quarterfinal. So everything was going right towards the script for him. You know, he had this, that, that aerial was crazy. What a cherry on top of that barrel. Um, but then Jordy, and this is the power of, of these types of waves, he found that perfect 10-point ride, literally, um, and flipped this heat upside down. Well, he had opportunities, though. You remember the left that looked like it was just going to be screaming 10 points as well and came up just short. So he had these opportunities and then was able to turn it finally on, like, his third chance. Well, yeah, he, he talked about it, though. You know, he, he had that conversation with Kelly, which was very interesting and telling for him to open up and just tell him that there's... That wave is there, it's waiting for you. And I think he had that in the back of his mind because this wave was just a crazy lift line draw off of that sandbar, basically, you know, almost shutting down at the end. But the bubble, watch the bubble. He pulls up into it and you can see the, the thing just travels with him. He's perfectly positioned in the bubble. You see it, the, the arc of the top of the barrel, and then just at the end, it just let him out. I mean, really, just a perfect execution of a tube ride right there and he threw up the Cristo claim. <laughs> I love it, and I love the fact that this thing, that they're, he and John are on either sides of the draw, and it's going to cook down into being this amazing matchup if they both make the final. I mean, he, he kidding me? It just couldn't, doesn't get any better so far. If you look at the, if before this, that wave specifically too, he did have an opportunity and kind of baited Sebastian Zietz into a wave that ended up being just a, a throwaway score, which set that wave up. And so knowing that, I mean, he was also competing. It wasn't like the thing just came to him. That he, was he worked for it. Probably the key moment in that he, you pointed that out to me when we were watching the Heat live, Pete, um, and, and he did. He sold him on that wave. And those are those little things that, you know, it's just, it's the competing. It's not just the talent and the surfing. It's those little uh, decisions that you make, those those really, uh, you know, like Adrian de Souza last year winning world title, he's that guy that sets the example. It's not just, you know, how talented you are. You have you can make those little tactical decisions that can give you the win, and he did that. Okay, well, you got Connor Jordy set up for semifinal number two. Your thoughts on that one, Stride? Well, it's just going to be fun to see those guys battle it out. I mean, it, you know, for Connor, it would be a, a huge feat. It's, you know, t excuse me, to win that, to win that heat will be hard because you know the, the conditions tomorrow we think they're going to be a little bit smaller but they're going to be really perfect you know they're both going to be able to surf to the level but i think jordy's just got a little a little bit more flair and he's got a little bit more skill when it comes to the technical side of things so i think we're going to see that tomorrow
Jordy in a must-win situation, so I'm sure he's going to be showing up here and uh, feeling a bit of that pressure, knowing that this is his first attempt at really solidifying himself. I mean, it's a long shot, but there is a chance, right, to have a world title here. So it's going to be a very pressure-filled heat against Connor. Yeah, it will. Um, and, and you know what's cool is I feel like Jordy Smith and even Chloe and Dino, they have that kind of par parallel career where always been amazing in small ways, but they're getting better slowly but surely in barreling waves as well. So this is going to really boost their confidence. Um, but now that it's bit meant to be a little bit smaller tomorrow, I, I feel like that does level the playing field a little bit. There's not going to be those heavy favorites on, whoa, the waves are scary, this guy has an edge. Tomorrow it's just going to be a duke out. Yeah, and well, if, if you look at all the four surfers left in this one, I mean, still, is this kind of how, the, did it script on how you thought it was going to fall into place here for the day for you, Strider? I, <laughs> I, I could not tell, honestly. It was, We're trying to make those calls was, early. There were so many, so many X factors involved with uh, you know, the rhythm and trying to find the right wave. And Super Tubes itself, the wave, you know, it can be 10 foot and perfect, not a drop out of place, straight offshore. But the wave never comes in in the same place. Mm -hmm. you know, theoretically, there's three separate peaks. There's one right up the middle, there's one on either side. But the way the, 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 the playing field lays out, it just never happens that you're going to be in the right place at the right time. So for me, it was, it was always an X factor, and, and to see who was going to win was just too hard. And your final thoughts, real quick? Well, I think, again, it's going to level the playing field because it's not kind of scary anymore. <laughs> it's just going to be everyone looking for, and also, it's not just barrels tomorrow. There's going to be errors back into play, so it should be fun. Love it. Well, we can't wait until it comes uh, up tomorrow morning. That sun comes up. We'll be uh, right here at 8 a.m. for Dawn Patrol and hopefully get some semifinal action underway. Thanks for joining us on The Bush Show. Broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League. You are joining us on our seventh day of the waiting period here at the Mayo Rip Curl Pro Portugal. Let's have a look at Julian Wilson. He'll go behind the tunnel lip here. Is he there? Oh, he's found the exit! Wow! Are you kidding me? And we are going to get our quarterfinals underway here. Wow! Chloe and Dino from deep and steep. has threaded a thunderbolt right there. <laughs> Julian Wilson. And that's multiple section. It's a non-stop action. And John John Florence is into the semi-finals. Pulls it, packs it nice and deep. He's running for the exit. It spits oh. him out. 